strolling these grounds, you wouldn't know you were between a major GO train line and a bustling Lawrence Avenue East. The estate was built in 1912. For nearly half a century, it's been a municipally owned art hub. It's an amazing site to pull up to every morning. Coordinator Tina Harper has worked here for 25 years. This site brings a deep sense of joy. The opportunity to access lifelong learning, the opportunity to see people develop a new skill and be happy and let go of some stress with their everyday lives, to be able to come and, and sit in the garden. There's lots to do here. There are summer youth camps. You can sculpt away in the pottery studio and learn to carve wood. There are also opportunities to learn folk art and across the hallway, you can do various fiber arts. For painters, there are dedicated spaces too. On the main floor, there are three gallery areas for artists. It has an amazing amount of character and charm and is often the perfect setting for a lot of artists to showcase their work. It's hugely valuable because there aren't a lot of spaces for artists that are, you know, early career, um, to find spaces. Zoe Bridgman was a professional photographer until five years ago. Now the artist paints full-time and was granted no-cost exhibit space at the center. This body of work was really sort of a tribute to a place that my family spent a lot of time and uh, a tribute to my father who passed away a year ago. She says these facilities are vital for new artists. A lot of those spaces that used to be available to just rent to have a show are now disappearing. The fact that it's through the city of Toronto opens you know, some little doors here and there and allows a bit of credibility. We always are looking to uh, offer as many public programs as possible. We also have a great accessibility lens, so we take any opportunity that we can to update our studios and bring in further accessibility there as well. The future will hold a lot of exciting possibilities.